and welcome to this Essentials Primer video. My name is Robert French. I'm an Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. All right, Essentials Primer. What is SolidWorks Essentials? Well, it's an introductory class that we offer here at Go Engineer that gives you a, a base level understanding of the software and its capabilities. The goals of this Essential Primer video are, you know, make sure, making sure that you understand the fundamentals of the software ahead of time. Uh, by understanding the fundamentals ahead of time and, and really knowing some of the, the key concepts of the software, you're really going to get the most out of your training. There's different zones, different shortcuts, different input methods in the software that, uh, if you understand ahead of time, really gives you a leg up, lets you ask some more advanced questions, and really stay on pace within the class so you get the most out of your training. Let's start with some interface basics. Certain areas of the software have different names, and knowing the names of these and the locations and areas they're found is pretty important as your instructor refers to them and tries to direct you through the lessons. So pretty typical to most Windows software, we have what we call the menu bar with some pretty easy shortcuts, including save, open, and new. We also have this new shortcut that was introduced in 2018 SolidWorks called the welcome window shortcut. When we first open up SolidWorks, this is essentially the view we're going to be looking at, this new welcome window kind of greeting us at the front door. The welcome window is a nice addition, kind of consolidates a lot of different uh, tools of the software into one easy to find place. You can see at the top of it, we can do new parts, assembly and drawings, uh, deal with recent documents, open existing ones, uh, some additional resources found in the bottom right, such as user groups and SolidWorks forums. So nice addition that consolidates a lot of tools. Continuing with interface basics, a couple more areas of the software. What we're looking at here is a picture of what the software will typically look like in your kind of day-to-day -day routine. Once again, we still have the menu bar up top. We have the command manager here where we find several of the SolidWorks commands such as sketching, extruding, revolving, uh, cutting away material, filleting. These different commands are organized onto different command manager tabs. The most prevalent ones would probably be Features and Sketch, which you can see on the leftmost side uh, of all those tabs. Uh, but all the tools are basically organized into these different command manager tabs to simplify the uh, interface of the software. This next area is a pretty important one and is changing during different workflows, different uses of the software. This area is constant, uh, commonly referred to as the uh, tree area. Uh, but it houses what we call the Feature Manager tree, the Property Manager, and the Configuration Manager. So right now what we're looking at is the Feature Manager, but if you just noticed inside that area, small, another small green box appear up top, highlighting the different tabs from left to right, those three tabs being the Feature Manager, the Property Manager, and the Configuration Manager. Next, we have this large section kind of out there in uh, blank right now, nothing in it, just kind of a large gray area. It's called the graphics area. As we start to build up our part, that's where we'll see it uh, represented in, in three dimensions. And lastly, uh, a couple times through the class, your instructor will refer you to the right-hand side of the software where we find the task pane. All right, let's go over some file type basics. So there's three main file types within SolidWorks. We have the part file. These are our basic building blocks for, uh, you know, just representing a, a, a base level part, the fundamental uh, building block. So we have like a bracket there. Another example would be this yoke we see. We take these uh, uh, part files and we put them all together in an assembly. So we can see, you know, two of the, the those two parts found in this assembly file, obviously with a uh, about a dozen other ones to create this uh, turn crank. So. We take our part files, the basic fundamental building blocks, organize them together within an assembly file in order to re uh, represent these more you know, intricate and, and you know, right, assemblies in essence. Lastly, we have the drawing file. So the drawing file takes our uh, uh, basic building blocks, our part files, and represents them on a 2D drawing, allowing us to dimension them and, and create you know, manufacturing information. So we also we have drawing files for parts, right, for individual parts, but we can also create drawing files for assemblies where we can represent bill of materials, assembly instructions, and things like that. All right, moving on, we have basic controls. So the left mouse button, pretty, pretty standard, is basically for selecting things, uh, clicking on objects, highlighting them, uh, uh, 
uh, selecting an object and inserting it into uh, boxes looking for a selection. Uh, different things we can select out in the graphics window include like things like a vertex, an edge, or a face. We can see once we select an object, it'll highlight with the default color of blue. Uh, default colors like that can be changed, but that's essentially what you'll see when you first use the software. We have the right mouse button. When we right mouse click, for instance, on this face we see here over on the right hand side, we get context options. So when I right clicked on the face, I got all these different uh, options for it that are specific to a face, for instance. If I right clicked on an edge or a vertex, I might get slightly different options because different commands are contextually applied to them. You know, only certain commands exist for certain selections. And then lastly, we have the middle mouse button, which is used for view manipulation. So we can roll that middle mouse button in and out. We can depress it and kind of move our cursor around. Uh, a lot of functionality uh, comes from that middle mouse button. Uh, way too much to spell out in one video, but here's a uh, handy guide for uh, basic shortcuts within the software. I'd, you know, if you if you want act, if you want this uh, list here, I'd recommend just screenshotting the video and, and saving a JPEG of it. But you can also download the uh, uh, PDF at the link I listed there below. Uh, so at the very least, you can see in the bottom left of that infographic uh, some of the SolidWorks mouse gestures. A lot of them involve the middle mouse button and uh, either an Alt, Shift, or Control key, and, and help you really kind of facilitate and move your view around. So I wanted to add real quickly uh, just an example of using the middle mouse button. If we roll the mouse wheel in and out, we can zoom in and out on our part. It will zoom in based on where your cursor is. So you want to make sure you position your uh, cursor over your mouse, otherwise you'll lose your part. If you do, another really common shortcut is the F key, which is zoom to fit, brings your part automatically back into the center of the screen. Also, uh, pressing the middle mouse button in and then dragging our mouse while holding that middle mouse button allows us to kind of rotate our part and actually our entire environment, if you notice the trihedron in the bottom left of the uh, graphics window. We're kind of ro rotating the entire environment. Uh, next, uh, using the control key. So this is used to select multiple items. This is very similar to Windows functionality where we can highlight several different uh, files or folders within Windows Explorer. Same concept kind of applies here. So I have that same picture from earlier where I had a face, edge, and vertex selected. The only way I achieved this is by holding the control key down and left clicking each one of those uh, uh, entities or, or objects uh, uh, one at a time. So I hold control down, I selected the face, while still holding control, selected the edge, and while still holding control, selected the vertex. We can also use the shift key, which once again has very similar functionality to uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, it, what it does is between our two selections, uh, in that infographic on the, le on the right, we can see uh, my selections. I first highlighted the bracket piece at the top, and then while holding shift, my next selection will be that crank sub all the way at the bottom at the second green arrow. While holding shift and making that selection, I highlight all objects between those two items, or between those two selections. Very similar to Windows Explorer func functionality. Obviously, can't really be useful in the graphics display area. There's not really a list format out there for the shift uh, selection method to be effective. So this is pretty typical when we're dealing in, for instance, the feature manager area, uh, which we see in that picture. Lastly, just another tip that I would throw out there. Uh, when you do SOLIDWORKS, some processes can be automated by pre-selecting things, and to an inexperienced user, it can pre uh, present some kind of uh, hard to understand results, or results you might not expect. So something I really recommend to a lot of people when you're trying to learn the fundamentals or basics is really, I hit the escape key quite a bit. I'll, I'll spam it three or four times just to ensure that I have nothing pre-selected and, and I have a good expectation of what I plan to select and, and what will happen as a result. That's it for the essential primer, so just some really basic stuff. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, if you really want to get the most out of your essentials class, really understand each area of the software. Your instructor will constantly point you to them and refer you to them, so really gives you a, a leg up understanding those uh, areas ahead of time. And then also just, just really uh, trying to understand the control and shift uh, select methods, 
uh, and really using that escape key to uh, make sure you have nothing pre-selected, uh, giving you some unexpected results. So that's it for now. I'll probably make a couple follow-up videos to this to go a little deeper uh, and explain a, a few more fundamental concepts. So look out for those. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.